ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. We've had 13 punishing interest rate rises to bring down inflation. So why is it ticking up again? And what does it mean for interest rates when the Reserve Bank Board meets again next week? Today, economist Cassandra Windsor on when things will start to get easier. I'm Sam Hawley on Gadigal Land in Sydney. This is ABC News Daily. The annual inflation rate has picked up. In fact, it's the first pickup in annual inflation since the December 2022 quarter. The headline inflation of 3.8% is consistent uh, with the Reserve Bank's forecasts for the June quarter as well. We are seeing uh, underlying inflation in our economy moderate. Uh, We would like it to moderate further and faster. Cassandra, these latest inflation figures, they're kind of a big deal, right? Apparently, they're the most significant data that we've had for a while. Why is that? So these figures are really important to the RBA in making their next decision about where interest rate go. And it's a really difficult decision at the moment because inflation has been coming down, but not as quickly as they like. And these figures are going to be really important in the decision that's that's coming up just next week. Right. Okay. So the RBA board is meeting next week. We'll get to that in a minute. So this is really key information about how we're all faring in this economy and inflation has actually risen. So that does not sound that great for all of us. Down, I would think, would be better. Yeah, so look, it has picked up a little bit. So we've got a, a inflation rate of 3.8% for the year to the June quarter, and that's up a little bit from the previous quarter, where it's at 3.6%. And what we've been seeing previously, so inflation was really high in 2022. We peaked at around 7.8% in late 2022. It'd been coming down slowly, but it had been slowly and steadily coming down um, since then. I mean, that was because of all the interest rate rises that the Reserve Bank was putting through. So this is the first quarter that we've seen a little bit of a tick up in inflation. It wasn't unexpected. Most economists did expect a little bit of a tick up in inflation. But it does mean that there's a little bit more pressure on the RBA about whether they will raise rates next week. But there is a little bit more in the detail um, in some of the other Mm. figures that maybe suggest things aren't quite as bad as it seems. Yeah, okay. So we had these 13 rate rises that really has started to help bring inflation down. Now we've had this slight uptick. So just explain that a bit further for me. What do we know about what is driving that uptick? Yeah, so the things that are driving the increase in inflation at the moment are all those sort of expenses that we all have to pay we can't really avoid. So we're seeing quite high rates of rent increases. That's really flowing through to inflation. So rents grew by over 7% in the last wow. year. That's very high. Oh uh, we're seeing increases in health. So the rate of prices in health grew by around 5% and education expenses and also insurance. So it's all those essential things that we can't really avoid. So they're not things that people can cut back on. They do have to keep paying for it. And we're seeing um, really sticky, is the word that economists like to use, sticky inflation because of those things. So it's really hard to reduce demand for essential items. Yeah, right. So you can put up rates, but that doesn't really change the equation when you're talking about things like insurance or rent. That's what they call services inflation, isn't it? It's not inflation on goods, the things that we just go out and buy like food. Yeah, so we managed to bring down the the goods inflation relatively well. So that's when we had that very high rate of inflation. We did bring it down. The interest rate rises were really having that impact. But the services has been much trickier to get under control. It is still looking like, you know, inflation will probably keep going down. And and, um, so we're sitting at 3.8% at the moment. The RBA's target range is 2 to 3%, but they're really targeting the midpoint of that range. So they really want to get inflation to 2.5%. 
Mm. It does still seem like it's heading in the right direction, despite this little kind of blip that we've seen this quarter, but it's happening really slowly. And that's because of those services and those essential items that people still need to spend on. And that's why it's sticky. Yes. That, that term sticky. Yeah. It's because <laughs> of these it's because of these services. It's inflation in services that is making it so sticky. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well the treasurer Jim Chalmers, he's actually, from what he said during his press conference, he's quite happy with these figures. He thinks it's not too bad. But this is the sixth consecutive quarter that underlying inflation has moderated. Uh, And it is also moderating in quarterly and annual terms, and we welcome that. Uh, So the 3.8% is what we call headline inflation. So that's the big number that we we all kind of look at. But when you get into the detail, there's another measure of trimmed mean inflation, which probably doesn't mean a lot as it is. But what it does is it takes out the most volatile items. So it takes out the, the biggest price increases or the biggest price decreases. And a lot of those kind of big swings in prices are because things are quite seasonal or demand changes or they're just really volatile prices generally. And so by looking at this trimmed mean figure, we can get a little bit more information about the direction of of general prices. And the good news story about today's figures is that the rate of increase in that trimmed mean figure actually fell a bit. So the previous quarter, we had a trimmed mean inflation rate of 4.1%, and this quarter was 3.9%. And that's actually the figure that the RBA looks at the most when they're looking at the inflation figures. So that might give them some comfort that inflation is heading in the right direction, despite the big headline figure being a, a little bit concerning. Mm, All right. So that's what they also call underlying inflation. Underlying, yes. So does that mean, just explain that for me, does that mean that things are actually getting cheaper or is it more of a case that things aren't getting more expensive so quickly? Yeah, I think this is a really important point because um, when we talk about, you know, inflation getting better or the rate of inflation falling, that doesn't actually mean things are getting cheaper. It just means they're growing at a, at a slightly slower rate. And, you know, that's, that's the intention. We don't actually want, you know, the overall prices to decrease. That causes um, other, other economic issues. But what we want is for that overall inflation rate to grow at roughly that 2.5% rate. But that, you know, still makes things really difficult for households yes. um, because they've had this huge rise in prices over the last few years. And, you know, that's not going away. Prices aren't, aren't going to fall. What we really want to hope for is that, that wages grow at a faster rate than prices so that people do get that increase in their, in their incomes. Well, the shadow treasurer, Angus Taylor, he isn't quite as positive as the Treasurer. He says they're actually a terrible set of numbers. Uh, Australians are losing hope. They're increasingly demoralised. They cannot see a pathway back to the restoration of their standard of living, which has taken such a hit under Labor. Mm, all right, well, Cassandra, let's have a look at that big question over interest rates and whether they might rise again. So the Reserve Bank Board, it's going to be looking really closely at these latest figures and it's meeting next week. As you say, they want the inflation rate to be sitting at 2.5% or between 2 and 3%. It's not there yet. So should we then expect they will react to this by increasing rates? So I think this is one of the most difficult decisions that the RBA's had to make in a long time. When the inflation rate was really high, it was actually quite an easy decision. They knew what they had to do. They had to increase rates. But this is really a bit of a line ball and it's it's quite a challenge for them about what to do and certainly also a challenge for for commentators such Mm, as myself to try and work out where things are going. I would think on balance, it's likely that the RBA will hold next week. Mm -hmm. So this inflation figure was in line with expectations. We did see that that little bit of positive news in the underlying or the trimmed mean figure, which will which will please them. And the other thing to remember is that the RBA is looking at a range of other economic indicators as well. So the inflation is absolutely key um, and one of the most important ones, but they'll also be looking at what else is happening in the economy. Mm. And we've had pretty soft economic growth recently. So the most recent GDP growth figure was 0.1%, so only just positive. Um, unemployment has remained relatively low, which is good, but it has been increasing a little bit. 
So it's clear that, you know, the economy overall is, while it's not in a terrible state, it's relatively soft. So they'll really be looking at the trade-off between, you know, how do we keep inflation under control, but not harm the economy too much through the impact of of rate rises um, that I have. Mm, Because the Reserve Bank Governor, Michelle Bullock, she's always talking about this narrow path, right? So they don't want to send the economy over a cliff by putting rates up further. Exactly. So there's real trade-offs involved here. So inflation, we know, is pretty bad on the economy and it's very bad on purchasing power of households, so how much money households have to spend, and particularly if inflation continues for a lot of time. It is a really poor outcome. But at the same time, you know, reducing un- economic growth too much or, you know, increasing unemployment also has really poor outcomes. Mm. So it's trying to find the balance between getting inflation under control, keeping economic growth going, keeping relatively good, you know, unemployment numbers coming out as well, because that's really important to, to households and the welfare of Australians. So that's why it, it really is a difficult decision this time round. Mm. I think the RBA would prefer not to, to raise rates. And I think the, the figures that have come out today give them the opportunity to take a little bit more time yeah. and to see what happens over the next couple of months, see if there's much of a change both in the general economic conditions and the inflation rate, and wait till they have a little bit more data before mm. seeing if they do need to increase again. Because mm, there's two thoughts here, isn't there, from economists, that basically you shouldn't just keep putting up rates because actually that's not helping the inflation problem at this point because as we discussed the services inflation, rising rents, insurance, all that sort of thing. But there's others that just say, look, you've just got to get in and kill off this problem. So just lift rates again and deal with it. Yeah, and that's why I think it's so challenging because both those things are, are quite true. We've seen this difficulty overseas as well. A lot of countries, while they went from the, you know, very high inflation to more moderate inflation, that was quite successful. Getting it from this kind of moderate rate to to really down to where they want to be has been very difficult. We do still see, you know, interest rate rises would still have that impact on inflation, but it likely wouldn't bring down the services component. It would bring down the other other components of inflation more because people would have to cut back their spending in, in other areas. But that's, you know, that's it has real impacts on, on households and everyday consumers, and it's likely to be a very slow process. So I think if the RBA feels that it's heading in the right direction, even if it's a bit slower than they would like, um, I think they're likely to hold off on raising rates right now. All right. So, OK, so that's your prediction for now. I know it's hard to make predictions around the economy at the moment. So thank you for that one. And a lot of people would welcome that, of course. They'd like to hear that prediction. But I guess also the question then, Cassandra, is when do things actually start to get easier? When do rates start to fall? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be some time until rates fall. I don't think we're going to see it, uh, rates fall at, at all this year. And it might be, you know, well into next year before we see much relief mm-hmm. there on rates. I think in terms of for individual households, I'm hoping things will start to get a little bit easier towards the end of the year. We do see that wages growth has been quite reasonable. We've got the stage three tax cuts and we also have energy rebates coming through um, both at a federal level and a lot of the state governments as well. So again, it's a, a bit of a challenge here is if people spend too much of it, that actually might push up inflation um, more. But if, if we see that actually people are saving it, that might just give a little bit more comfort to, to households and, and not increase the inflation rate at the same time. Mm, so some positive news, but we're still on this narrow path. It's Yeah, it's an incredibly um, difficult prediction to make this time and, and a really, really tough job um, for the RBA. I'm glad I'm not sitting on the RBA board right now. Yeah, me too. Cassandra, thanks so much. Thank you. Cassandra Windsor is the Chief Economist of the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, which is an independent think tank. This episode was produced by Oscar Coleman. Audio production by Sam Dunn. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. Thanks for listening.